Oh, that's cool. I'm pretty sure that's my mic stand. This is? Yeah. Wait, that attaches to a mic stand? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I guess I can just... Hey, leg up. You look good on camera, though. Turn it off the Bluetooth. Turn it off the Bluetooth. I don't know where my phone is. It's hot. Does everybody have communion? Does anybody not have communion, I should ask? Okay. start with communion guys um, it's cool because I see us as a church getting back to our roots and Acts 2 uh, 42 through 47 it describes uh, what family is uh, what true community really is and it gives you four things that describe what family is and then it kind of gives some color to what that looks like but it says there if you read it it says that uh, the disciples they they were devoted and that's the word it uses to describe them and they were devoted to four things they were devoted to the apostles teaching they were devoted to fellowship uh, man and I love that word fellowship I think it points to the church and it points to what true family is what real community is. Um, uh, that word that it uses for fellowship, you know, it means uh, really the, 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 the literal translation is <clears throat> social intercourse, you know, and that might sound weird to some of us. I know the word intimacy sounds weird to some of us, uh, and, and that's because we're not used to being close to one another. I think it's in our nature, our sinful nature, to not be close to people. And, uh, but that was never God's design, you know, and, and the disciples, they devoted themselves to being involved with one another. Uh, they <clears throat> devoted themselves to being intimate with one another and sharing each other's burdens and uh, having harmony in the church instead of hostility. Uh, I love that word harmony, you know, and that's what I pray that our church uh, would represent, a church uh, of harmony. Uh, so they were devoted to fellowship. <clears throat> they were devoted to 
uh, sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper. You know, they celebrated Jesus together, and that's what we're here to do uh, tonight, you know, is to uh, hear a devotional and put it into practice, of course, but we're here to celebrate Jesus. And so if you have your communion, open that. And let me just pray for us, and we can take this <clears throat> as a family. The last thing that they were devoted to was to prayer. And so Jesus, uh, together, uh, one voice, we're all here, one in spirit, and we just praise you. Like we're here to celebrate you, Jesus. Taking communion isn't this. Uh, somber kind of you know eerie thing like it's it's this time of celebration where we're remembering who you are Jesus and what you did we thank you for the freedom that you have given us Jesus we thank you for the new life that you have given us uh, we thank you that we get to reflect Acts 2 42 through 47 Lord it's beautiful like a deep sense of awe came over all of those disciples. Uh, they were rejoicing. Like, as I read that, I go, it looks like there is great joy happening there. And, Lord, I pray that you would just open up our eyes to see the beauty of all of this. I was talking to Ken the other day, and I was telling him, I was like, man, I, I just, I, I wish... You know, some people could, could have the perspective the Lord has given me. You know, to be in this family. And, 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 and some might look and go, man, that, that's cool, Billy. That, that works for you. But it doesn't look uh, all that exciting. And I was telling Ken, but they would be wrong because I've experienced... Um, just standing in awe of you, Jesus, and, and seeing a miracle after miracle unfold before my very eyes. You know, like I was just reading in Exodus how uh, you, you uh, walked the Israelites through the Red Sea and, and, and you performed that um, just miraculous act. And after they were through and the Egyptians got caught up in the sea, it said they stood in awe of you. Like they had this fear of you and just this worship to you. And they were like, wow, the Lord is great. And like that's what I've experienced, that same awe as I've walked with you and as I've been in this family, Jesus. And I thank you for that. And it's all because of the cross. It's all because I was dead in my sin and you came to rescue me. The Son of God made his home among us, became flesh, live a perfect life, and, and you died for us, Jesus. You hung on the cross for our sins so we could be dead to sin. You were raised from the grave so we could have new life, and I'm experiencing that as I walk with my family and as we walk with you. And so we praise you, Jesus, and here as a family, we are celebrating you, Jesus, and I just pray that this would be our culture, just celebrating you, going, praise Jesus, look at the cross, look at what he's done. And so, family, let's rejoice, and let's take this together. Amen. Let's gather together for worship. I know we, we don't have um, lyrics. The first song we'll be singing, it's a new song, so look it up on your phone. It's called Glory is Yours, and it's by Elevation Worship. Um, most of us should have phones. If you don't, share. Um, yeah, share. And if you do know the song, give your phone to somebody else. But let's sing this loud. What's it called? It's called Glory is Yours. By Elevation.
going to get in the way of our worship. Let's worship, guys.
made maker. It's by Lee Lee.
here touching every heart. And so I want us to remember that <clears throat> as we gather here right now, that Jesus is here and he's touching every one of our hearts. Don't push his hand away. He says, you are here healing every heart. That healing is taking place tonight. I believe that. I believe that that's what God wants. You are here turning lives around. I believe that's what Jesus wants to do. He is the giver of life. We talked about that all day today. And I really believe that, guys. So let's tune our hearts and, and let's sing this last song together. No longer slaves. <clears throat> Look it up. I think uh, we're singing the, the Zach Williams version. I'll give you guys a second.
a child of God. Amen, that's the truth, man. Bask in that. Do I need a mic? Y'all can hear me? No, for real. Can y'all hear me? Alright, cool. Can y'all hear me back there? setting that you've kept and really recovered here and, and continuing Wednesdays um, in your way, Jesus. It's good. So I pray you have your way tonight, um, that our hearts are exposed and open to you, Jesus. You have full access to mine. Uh, I pray over all of this, Lord, that you, uh, and you, you pierce our hearts tonight, Jesus. Have your way, King. Amen. Um, so I'm going to be reading out of Ephesians 5, uh, 15 to 20. Just that small passage, living by the Spirit's power. Um, if you guys want to turn there, I'll wait a second. What was it? Ephesians 5, 15. 5, 15 to 20. So this is what it reads. It says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk on wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why some of us are here right now. Um, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And... Um, I mean, I think that's so good because it's, it's what I needed to hear for myself this week, too. Um, there's another piece of scripture I was going to read, and it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 9. Uh, starts at 24. I think I'm just going to read 26. Yeah, I'm just going to read 26. It's Paul. And uh, he says this in 1 Corinthians 9, 26. He says, so I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. 
And what I see Paul saying there is, he's like, I'm, I'm doing this for real. I'm not just playing games, and I'm not just a, a smack around. I am, I am here to do God's will. I'm not playing games. I'm not faking the funk. And, uh, and, and, the, and Paul lived, as we read in Ephesians, that's how he lived. Every move, every breath Paul took was with purpose. He was intentional. He didn't do something thoughtlessly. Everything he did was kingdom focus and kingdom building. And uh, I know for myself that uh, I don't act um, thoughtfully in every step. I have acted thoughtlessly. I've excluded Jesus from parts of my life. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit tonight. Right off the bat, it says, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools with those who are wise. I'm like, well, how do I live um, wise instead of a fool? I've lived like a fool my whole life. Um, up until the moment I met Christ, we live like fools. If we live for ourselves, we are living as a fool. If we live for ourselves and trust in self, we are living like a fool. Anyone here, and not to shame anybody, I trust in myself. I act as a fool sometimes. If I trust in myself and live for myself, I am living as a fool. And, and living wisely is trusting the Lord. We talked about that. So trusting the Lord and living for his kingdom and in his will. Um, right after that says, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly. Uh, understand what the Lord wants you to do. And that's only by living in the Spirit's power. I think that it's easy for a lot of us that um, are at the sober house or disciple at the sober house or as we come here on Wednesdays, it's easy to know what's going on. We're at church. We're living in the Lord's will. We're, we're being a family. But I think it's, it's really easy to act thoughtlessly in our lives when we're at work or we're at home with the kids or the leaders aren't around and we're chilling at the sober house or we are at the sober house and we're just not living um, and, and living purposeful. And I think tonight, and it hit my heart, I know as I was talking with Bill, it's simple, silly things. When I get rest at home, um, busy weeks, a lot of us leaders are busy. Um, that's a good thing. We have purpose uh, and we have mission in our life, absolutely. But we can get home and I can act thoughtlessly when the weekends come or when I have time home. Um, I can live for myself when I'm at home. And I think sometimes when Jesus gives us that kind of rest, we all always have rest in Christ. But when I have rest away from uh, responsibilities in that way, I can be spending time with the king instead of spending time with myself. I think a lot of times at work, we exclude Jesus from our jobs or we exclude Jesus from uh, priorities that we uh, have a disconnect and think they aren't a part of the kingdom. Um, I scoop poop for a living and you think that's not really kingdom focused, right? So I could just, you know, I could just do my day at work and do whatever, but I, I've been... Uh, encourage to spend that time in the window in my car and spend time in prayer spend time pleading spend time wrestling with my heart and i did that today and it was good i spent a long time today wrestling with my heart with the lord in a quiet car for hours and it was good for me and i think a lot of us uh don't spend that kind of time with purpose i think it's easy to spend purpose when we're here in this setting or at the sober houses or or at church and um i'm convicted of how i spend my time in rest um, and continuing with that, it says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Um, it absolutely ruined my life, um, amongst other things. And it says, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's what Paul means when he's like, he, he talks a little bit before that in Corinthians. He's like, I tra I bought a, a, an athlete trains their body physically for a reward that's going to fade away. But I train my body, uh, he's speaking spiritually, for a, work, for a reward that's eternal. Um, he says, I'm not just shadow boxing. And I think it would be really cool tonight to look at places in our life where we're just shadow boxing. Sure, um, we, are, we have the Holy Spirit, but there's a difference of having the Holy Spirit and being filled. I was talking to Lego the other day, and uh, he was message prepping. He's like, man, it was, it was good. Um, when I was done, I was tired and I was drained. I went and talked with my wife, and, and we did some stuff, and I was filled with the Spirit. And, and I remember it's like, yes, Jesus. Jesus would, would go preach and teach and go speak to the father afterward he would uh, the disciples would go uh, do miracles and, and preach and peter at pentecost and he's like and after we we pray we recharge we reload to go back to war and i think sometimes man we just we we're like i have the spirit so i'm good but it's like i i'm i'm running on empty and jesus is like and, and uh, jesus calls us to be continue continually filled with the spirit and when we're filled with the spirit this is what happens we uh it says in 19 
uh, be filled with the Spirit. Uh, instead, be filled with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, my wife told me the other day, she's like, this is frustrating a lot. Of and it is, because I, I, when I am in my flesh, I have a frustrated heart. I'm not singing psalms and, and songs and hymns in my heart to the King. I'm frustrated about things that um, don't matter. I'm frustrated about things that uh, don't build kingdom. I'm frustrated about things that, or, or, or worrying about things that don't have any purpose. But I know when I'm filled with the Spirit and I'm intentional with the time that the Lord's given me and everything that I'm doing, that I'm filled, I have purpose. Even when struggles and circumstances come and arise, I have a assurance because I have the King. Uh, acting um, thoughtfully and running with purpose in every step um, gives you purpose. You're not empty. I can, I can go slam out some work for a week and, and make a paycheck and be empty. Or I can spend a week in work, uh, going to work and spending time with my brothers and resting how the Lord would call me to rest. And listening to how he's telling me to rest. Yes, sometimes it's like, hey, go spend time with your little boy. Sometimes go go open the word. Um, and it's important for us to listen to the Spirit, just not assume what the Spirit's telling us to do. So I think tonight would be really good, guys, to, to sit down and, 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 and ask ourselves, where have we excluded Jesus from our lives? Where in our lives are we not, uh, do, do we take that purpose and set it aside until it's time for that purpose to be used? Uh, what am I doing? Where, how am I resting? And I, am I intentional in everything I'm doing? Um, and that means in everything we're doing. I believe Paul uh, definitely set the example. The man said, follow me as I follow Christ. A statement that I um, think is pretty bold, right? Um, and he ran with purpose in every step. He, every breath he took was for the glory of the kingdom. And I think that's an example we should look at tonight. And I think we should ask ourselves uh, where we're at in that. And it says right off the bat, I want to read that again. Man, be careful how you live. Examine how we've been living as a whole. Um, the places where, hey, I'm filled with the Spirit. Why am I not filled with the Spirit here? Uh, why are my circumstances and situations uh, determining how filled I am with the Spirit? And I think that's what Jesus was speaking to my heart. And uh, I just want to read again, man, uh, that 1 Corinthians 9, when Paul says, uh, he says, this is what he says, it's uh, 4, uh, or no, uh, 24, 26. He says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. Um, all the athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. Um, let's look at what we're shadow boxing in our lives, guys, and, and put on the gloves and go to war. I love you guys. Love you, Peter. Love you, Peter. Ask oh. the questions. Yeah. Um. So you guys, we're gonna all sit up here when we're done um, amongst ourselves. We're gonna get, yeah, we're gonna get into get in our tables, scrunch up, guys, no one by themselves. We're gonna get in like three, four, five tables amongst ourselves. Talk about it, 15, 20 minutes. Talk about what we just, what, what Jesus just spoke to us. And afterwards, if you guys have any questions, me, Lego, and Bill will be up here, and we can do it just like a Q and A panel type deal. And if you guys have any questions about what we talked about or anything you're talking about at your tables, we'll be up here to answer those for you. Is there any questions now? Is there any questions now? Yeah, I got one. Uh, you said there's a difference between uh, being filled with the Spirit and having, or did you say having the Holy Spirit and being filled? Yeah, or yeah. So, so I, I am, I have, the, I am, I am. Have the Holy Spirit. I have a new nature when I have at conversion. When I give my life to Christ, there's a new nature in us now, and it is the nature. It is the nature of Christ. It is the Holy Spirit. Um, what we can do though is we can quench the Holy Spirit. We can stifle the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit by doing things the Holy Spirit doesn't want us to do. Not that I have completely run off the rails. The Spirit has left me. I have quenched it completely, and I'm living for myself again. But there is there is time in my life, even 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 coming up here and, and speaking and, and to teaching or anyone, even Bill or Lego as they preach to us on Sundays. There's man that that's that's draining, and we have to go back and refill and spend time with our Creator. Um, we have a new nature, and it's good to stay filled with that new nature. Yes, absolutely. Um, we can we can easily and even not cycling it. We can easily just if we don't remain in Christ and, and that we're not remaining in the Spirit. The Spirit's the new nature we have, and we can definitely not remain in that new nature. We can choose ourselves still. So.
Any other questions, guys? Going once. Going once in a while. Cool, yeah, then get amongst yourselves at the tables and let's talk about it.